Hi everybody, I'm Sandy Alnock and I'm filling in today for Julie Eversole on Hello Monday. So, Hello Monday! I wanted to share a little something with you today that was inspired by this Cosmo Cricut Just Add watercolor pad. I think you've probably seen these on the blog already and you've probably seen them other places because they are flying off the shelves and I was really curious. I wanted to see what they look like and how they work and that got me thinking of another idea. So first let me show you the pad and how it works and then I will show you my idea. This is the Just Add watercolor pad from Cosmo Cricut and I wanted to show you what some of the pages look like and how cool this resist is going to be when you put your watercolor over it. Lots of different patterns that they have in here and some of them are gold foil and there's foil mixed with the, the varnish. It's not embossing powder but it acts like it when you put the watercolor over it. There are some sections like these where you cut them apart and use them separately. You can do wall hangings, you can do scrapbook pages, you can do cards. Lots of different things that you can do with this pad and I'm gonna have a whole lot of fun finishing up the rest of it because just doing a couple of these was a blast. You can see how easy it is to make that resist come out. All you have to do is add enough color to it and it shows up. If you're brand new to watercolor, these are really a great, great thing I think to practice your watercolor as well as just get some cool effects. I put this panel on Kitty Wampus on here and distressed the edges just a slight bit and look at the shine you get in that that really gorgeous foil. I, I just think this is really beautiful and so simple to do. I did another card with all embossed pieces, these the, the white resist instead of the foil, and it just looks so springy and happy. It just makes me smile to look at it. All I did was add color, literally. It was so simple to, to make a card that looks so artistic. And that inspired me to do something with an embossed resist and the bokeh or bouquet set of stamps from Ellen Hudson. These were released last October and I've had a couple ideas with them in my head for a while and this is one that I'm really excited to bring you today. I'm taking my Ranger cardstock and preparing it for all of the embossing by going over it with an EK Success powder tool and that's going to get all of the static I guess off the surface. I was careful not to touch it with my fingers as well because the grease from your fingers will make embossing powder stick to it. So I'm using the stamp set and Versamark ink which you can't see here. I'll show you at an angle a little bit later so you can see better what exactly is going on here. I'm just stamping a bunch of the circles to make the flowers for the card and I'm going to do this as two steps of embossing. I'll do this first step and get this all heat set and I'm using clear embossing powder, super easy. And you can see there's no stray chunks of embossing powder stuck on there because of that powder tool that keeps all that stuff from getting all sticky everywhere. And now I'm masking, I'm doing some super simple masking with a post-it note. And you can see I'm kind of laying it over one of the circles and the smaller circle is just going to meet up with the circle at the edge of that post-it note. And I just didn't feel like cutting out circles to do masking. And I put my embossing powder on here, but I'm going to do something else before I heat set. I'm going to use this Versamarker pen. It has a brush nib and a regular like bullet type nib for drawing. And I'm, I haven't heat set everything, so I'm careful not to touch this nib to the actual embossing powder. But I'm putting leaves in various spots. And this is going to act like the Versamark ink. And it's going to emboss, so it's going to catch all of this embossing powder on it. And you can see how easy that is and it just picked up my leaves just perfectly. You can do a lot of doodling, all kinds of fun things with that. Just make sure that you don't wait too long because you do need to get the embossing powder to stick to it. But I, all of that embossing makes wells for the color to sit in. So I'm just painting into like that little hole inside that embossing and you can add water to it and dab it off to lighten colors. You can add layers of colors. Lots of fun things that you can practice your watercoloring with on a super simple, fresh image like this. It's really loose. The scribble lines give you lots of freedom. So it's a great practice idea to do flowers like this with this stamp set. 
and so I'll just tap off periodically um, to lighten some color. And here I wanted to show you that when you watercolor you generally want to pull color toward the end of the brush, not push like this. You want to pull color. It's just going to make things blend a little bit better because the ink, or I should say the paint, stays on the tip of the brush. That's usually where it picks up the most. So you want the place that has that tip to be pushing forward and the, the back end of the brush that's towards your hand to do kind of some of the blending. I'm not sure if that made sense, but I'm hoping it does to help you with a little, little technique. And throughout this whole thing, I'm just going to keep layering color on top of each other, one after another, to darken colors. And there's places like here where some of my color went out of the lines, and I'm just going to blend it in with the color that's already there. Why not? Or dab off some if I don't like it and add some more color. The paints I'm using that you see here are from the Peerless Watercolor Set. Those are squares of really saturated color, and I have mine labeled with little half circles of paint so that I can see what color each one of them are because you can tell the the dry color of those those painted sheets doesn't look anything like what it actually paints like. So I, I keep that on them as a reference and I just picked out five colors to use on this particular one. Now there you can see how dark that purple can come out if you use more pigment and less water and all I did was lighten it up and add more water um, by dabbing some of it off and, and add more water on top to lighten it to match a little bit closer to the purple above. And the pink, again, it went on really saturated. And if I, if I want to add more water to it, I can, or I can just dab. There's so many ways that you can change things. And here is where I make a mess. And <laughs> I'm going to fix it later. But when you watercolor wet right next to wet, you run the risk of that happening. And purple and yellow make baby poo brown, just in case you ever wondered. That's just what happens. But I was trying to do this video quickly and try to get it all done in one shot. And I was not willing to wait. So you can heat set in between if you would like, or just let it rest and go back and finish once things have dried up a little bit. I'm adding other colors. You see I had added a little yellow on top of yellow, so I get a two-tone yellow. And here I've got a little of that teal blue bleeding into my green. So in my brain I noted that I wanted to add some teal later to the green. And what, I think that's one of those things that I do on a regular basis. Here I got some of the yellow bleeding into the green and I wanted to remove that because I like the teal with the green better than the yellow green for this particular one. So then I just add my green back in after I remove some of that yellow. Next I'm going to add in some of the background color and I want it to be a really intense. Uh, I, I started out this whole thing was going to be pastel and now it, it just keeps getting darker and brighter and more intense and that seems to be my modus operandi is things just get brighter and, and more intense all the time. I got a little bit into the green, but you can see I just dabbed it off, and I'll add more of the teal and green later, so nobody's going to know that I went out of the lines a little bit on that. This whole technique and this stamp set are really loose and fresh and give you lots of freedom to just play. Just practice your watercoloring and move the color around, see how things react to each other, lighten and darken and dab. If you have paper towels that have a particular pattern on them, you can use that to create some pattern. And there's just tons of things you can do to have fun with your watercolors. So here I'm going to add more of the teal because I like the teal with the green and add more of that. And in just a couple minutes, the video cut out, so I didn't get to show you all of the intensive uh, work that I did. I that purple and blue flower on the left. I actually added a lot more color to, but the camera didn't capture it. So you'll see a photo of that right there. Right there. <laughs> so I added a lot more color to that. And what I'm doing is putting the paper between two sheets of cardstock, just scrap cardstock. Great use for that stuff that has been sitting around enough that it's yellowed on one side. So that's, that's what this green color was. It's sat around my house for years. And I ironed it for about 45 seconds, and all of that embossing powder melted off onto the scratch cardstock. And look at what came out. Nobody is going to have any idea how you did this. It's like magic that there's no embossing on there. You're not going to see that. 
but it looks like this beautifully masked drawing. It, it was drawn in white and it's just going to amaze your friends. So I didn't even put the sentiment on the outside. I put a thank you sentiment on the inside because this is so gorgeous. I just wanted to keep it as is. Thanks so much for joining me here today on Hello Monday. Julie will be back next week. Bye guys.